is being stupid today. And I really wish it wasn't being stupid, because that would be great. But it is, so, bar humbug. Hello humans, welcome to Fangirl Friday, where I talk about books, movies, and other things that I like to fangirl over. Do you like my shirt? It says, I miss Uncle Ben. That's what it says. It's a sad spidey. I miss Uncle Ben. Today I'm going to be talking about a very controversial topic, and that is the death of fictional characters. Now you probably understand why I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> but more specifically, how to deal with the death of fictional characters. I promise this is going to be totally spoiler free, so if you have never picked up a book before in your life, the experience of reading will not be destroyed for you by watching this video. It's going to be completely spoiler free, except for this shirt. But I think everyone knows by now. The death of a fictional character can be heartbreaking. Literally heartbreaking. Because the thing is, while reading the book, you get super attached to them. You kind of lose yourself in this story, and in losing yourself in the story, you lose yourself in them. And then that's ripped away from you. Ripped away. Ripped away. Ripped away. It's traumatic. I have literally spent days in funks induced by character death. It is a very scary thing. I often scare myself by how attached I get to fictional characters and fictional stories and fictional words and how much it actually affects me, but that is not what we're here to talk about today. So these are some steps to help you deal with the death of a fictional character. Step one, get into comfy clothes. For mourning the death of a fictional character, I recommend a tracksuit pants and a comfortable t-shirt and gross hair. Because really, if you look gross, you're going to feel gross. And in this first step, you want to feel gross. You need to be able to express your grief. And the most practical way of doing that is getting into gross clothes and feeling gross and then working from there. It's perfectly okay to feel like a real person has died because fictional characters feel like real people sometimes. That's the sign of a really good book. <laughs> the next step is to just release your pent up grief in whatever way works for you. I personally cry. I am a crier. I release emotions through my tear ducts and they spill out onto my face and sweeten my tea in front of me. No, that's a lie. I don't sweeten my tea with tears. That would be cannibalistic and kind of creepy. The next step is to keep reading. You cannot just stop reading when someone dies. It's hard. I know. There have been many books where a character has died, I felt heartbroken and I put the book away. But you have to come back to it. You have to finish it and you have to find closure. And if they don't give you closure, you need to create your own closure. A book I read really sucked at closure. It didn't close off anything and I got really angry so I wrote like a three page epilogue and then I tweeted about it and then I think I blogged it and then I kind of just outpoured all the feels and then of course I realized that there was another book in the series and I slapped myself silly. Of course there's closure, it's in a whole nother book. And last but not least, the most important step is to move forward. This is gonna sound so cliche, but you really need to move past your grief. You can't let your sadness eat you because it's very easy to, uh, but you've got to realize if they were a real person, they wouldn't want that for you. So you need to get yourself out of bed, go and start a new book. But basically, fictional deaths suck. Painful as heck. So you guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I love you all and goodbye. The amount of time that I have laid in my bed is laid the correct tense to use there. Laying in my bed, I have lied, I have lied, laid, I don't know.